talk. The final talk of this session is given by Michael Tunster, and it's on masking tables and underestimated security risk, which is a joint work uh, with him and Carolyn Whitner and Isabel Oswald. Yeah, so continuing the theme of uh, side chain analysis, when uh, conducting a, a simple differential power analysis, we, uh, we base our attack on the observation that an instruction manipulating data may consume more or less power depending on the handling weight of the data that's, that's being manipulated. For example, this, this, sorry, this instruction here, we can see different handling weight levels depending on different power consumption levels depending on the handling weight of the data that it is, manip it is manipulating. Mm -hmm. So what to do with this, typically we will take a bunch of acquisitions and for each one we'll predict the handling weight of the output of, of the first box in the first round for a given key hypothesis. So when you're making a hypothesis on one byte, and if our hypothesis is correct, we will see a significant correlation at the point in time where that value is manipulated by the process that we're trying to attack. And then put in great hypothesis, we'll see something like, something like these gray traces in the background where no significant correlation is observed. And then as we increase the number of traces, we get a better, a better distinction between our correct and incorrect hypothesis. So countermeasures for this, being another state of things that are much simpler than the, the, the countermeasure for repair described by Tom just now. So the, the, the first thing that was proposed was just a simple an XOR with one random value. We XOR this random value with your plain text going in, maybe choose another random value to XOR with all your key bytes, and then you would manipulate all, the, all, all of your, your plain text and your key such that every intermediate state was, it, was manipulated. <laughs> Sorry. Every intermediate state is manipulated, XOR with some random value is unknown to an attacker. This poses problems, as described by Tom, when you have a nonlinear function. So for an Xbox or AES, you're required to construct a table in memory. So you have our Xbox S, where it's all in an index with a random value R, then the, con then, then the value at that index is an XOR with another random value S to produce a table in memory as prime that we can then use to correctly compute an AES. So another proposition was to use um, affine masking for AES, where we're using the, the, the structure of, of AES. So we have two, two masks again, where one is, one is a multiplicative mask and one is an additive mask, where we were obliged to construct one table that allows us to map x to rx, xor r, r prime. And a second table is then constructed s prime, where the, the index and the data itself are masked using our map. So in all cases, this has to happen before we can actually compute our AES. And moving on to what higher, higher order masking schemes. So as, 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 as Tom was saying, we, we have often have more, more than one share if we want to have a higher order resistance. So in this case, for the second order masking scheme, we have two random values, the R1, R1, R2, that mask an, mask an index, and should be S1, S2, will mask our, our data. But in this, in, this, in this instance, this table has to be constructed every single time we want to do a table lookup, as if this only produces one one, the result, what one, <laughs> the result of one byte, and, and we have to then change the random values to avoid leakage. So these things can be very, very costly.
So lots of these schemes yeah, we've been proposed, been shown to be secure, that some proofs are attached to some of them. But we have to construct these tables in, in memory. And we have a, 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 a node index. So I, I, have to go, I have to go from 0 up to 2 by 5. And then that will, the bit loops are invisible in the power consumption. So here you can see a repeating loop between the back lines of an implementation of a Boolean masking. So there it's creating a table where the index and the data being stored are both masked with some random value. And this for affine masking, where it's generating the map for so to move x into x times r xor r prime. So we can then pick out these into, into sub-traces and use those themselves to conduct a, a DPA attack on, on the mask, mask values, which will then allow us to conduct a DPA afterwards. So we have two implementations, one on an ARM7 microprocessor and one on an 8051 microprocessor. And as you can see, the mask recovery is almost, almost perfect with um, this being the number of bits that are in incorrect. So for the address mask going in, the result of the XOR with our index was our random value, nearly always correct. Here for the data mask, always one bit wrong for some reason when we were able to, to, to find out why. But in any case, this completely removes the masking and you can conduct a standard DPA afterwards, taking the mask values into account. And we have similar results for affine masking. So countermeasures, what, 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 could, what could you do? The intuitive thing to do would be propose some function f that controls the, the, the root that i takes from 0 to 255. So that if I, could, if I could can't form hypothesis on a, which is a hard, hard, hard than you, hard than you would imagine, because we, we propose three, three different things. So you have a random start index. So when you generate your table, you choose a random value k, add that, add that to each index. And compute and generate a table like this, or as a random walk, we generate have some a function where you compute lots of operations, so that it's like oh, the table generated in some random order, governed by lots of random values, or a random permutation, a proper random permutation that you use repeatedly, and and. Uh, so here are random permutation <laughs> length, 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 length m, where m divides the size of the table. <coughs> and then we choose to use, to use this again and again. So we can have a look at the, uh, the random walk counter measure in this, this one here in more detail. So we recall that we can, we can take out individual traces like this. And the, so we have 256 different traces where we have an only mix going in. It's then computing, um, generating our table where you want to retrieve the mask. So if we superimpose some of the some of those traces, so it builds tension. <laughs> so these traces, these sub traces, are two hundred two thousand points long, and I superimposed superimposed four of them here, so you can see they have the same form. And the, the, the data, the differences we're looking for, you can see the red, 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 green, magenta. There's small more differences with the, the correlation we're trying to get at. So given that the process was obliged to compute this, we can divide it up into the, into the different operations. So x is known, this is our index going from 0 to 255. W doing some fixed random for, for our single trace. So for the 256 possible values for W, we can compute a correlation trace. And here, the, 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 for the correct value of W, is the, the red trace, and the incorrect ones being the gray traces being behind. So there's 255 gray traces there. So I'm sure you can see what's going to happen next, which move along to the, the next operation. So this here would be the next instruction to the output of the multiplication it gives us the correct value for, for, for u in the, in the, shown by the red trace, or the incorrect values in the, in the gray trace. This large, larger peak here 
is in fact a multiplication by one. So that's the result of x or w times one. So what we know from our previous observation when we derived w, that that, that that occurred here. So obviously here we want to look at the next instruction. And then doing the same thing for the addition of y, we have exactly the same observation where we can, we can derive the correct value of y and just before we have an addition with zero. And in the next, next part of the attack, we have XOR, Z, XOR, our address mask, finally. <coughs> but we don't need to derive the address mask. We just want either our, our address mask or our data mask. So we look for the, the XOR sum of Z and M1. And because we can compute S, we'll look at the output of S. Because this will have no linear relationship between you know, the, all of these functions. We won't get any, any, any peaks beforehand that we get a, a good, clear result um, for the correct value of Z XOR M1, which will also confirm all our other hypotheses. So if we see no clear peak here, clearly something has gone wrong, and we have to go look at the lower rankings values for previous masks. And then finally, we can get, 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 a, get hold of our data mask, which again is the, the, the red trace. So this, this would be this being the value that you would store and then use to enable your DJ attack afterwards. So you'd have to, have to do that process for each trace you acquire, so like a thousand, seven thousand traces, and then use those mask values corresponding to each trace to conduct the DPA. So obviously, if you have a random start index, we're essentially doing the same thing, but much simpler because we just have one addition with a random value beforehand. And as you can see, the error rate is, is quite small. The, the majority of cases we have zero or one bit error, which is a negligible when conducting a, a DPA afterwards. And so these numbers were generated with 1,000 traces. 1,000, yeah. One. So the random, random permutations, so the permutation of, of length, of length then that was repeated. <coughs> The, sort of the first element of each permutation will be the same, so we can pick out those and, and try and get some correlation out to show what, what, what mask bits and what, what permutation value was, was used. And this was just done through uh, generating lots and lots and lots of different values, storing those that were that, that looked the best, and then been, been including more more parts of the random permutation and just building up what looked like it could be the best combination of, of permutation and mask values. And in, in the case sort of the case where the permutation was 30, 32 by its long, we had up about 16,000 combinations that we kept in memory to uh, try, try and get hold of the correct mask in the end. So here are the, the error rates for permutations, short, short permutations, the error rates are quite, are quite low. As you can see, as, as the permutation length increases, it tends towards a, a, binary, quite a binary distribution. So when the permutation length is the same size as the table, then you should have a perfect binary distribution and there'll be no information to get hold of. But these values should permit, these values here, only going up to 32, should be, should be adequate to the, uh, the EPA afterwards. So the, top of the bias here, what I'm going to is about half a bit. So countermeasures were said to near impossible. We, we've sort of run, run, out, run out of ideas. So what I was saying about permutation being 256 bytes long, to generate such a thing, you would need 256 true random values. Actually, on a smart card, it's going to be very difficult to, uh, to, 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 to generate. So that computation time for that may be, may be prohibitive. <coughs> and well, the, su the success of an attack assumes that 256 traces are sufficient to, to, to achieve the attack. And we have a, 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 um, an evaluation of the signal to noise ratios in, in, in our paper for those that are interested. 
Thank you for the talk. Are there any questions? Yes. Did you try to compare your raise rate of attack with um, more classical second order attacks? No, because it's not it's not second order attack. No, but yeah. did you compare the, the efficiency of the attack? You could you could mount a, a second order attack with uh, on these implementations, right? Sure. But what the second order attack you end up with a correlation coefficient that's say about point one five or so. And then when you remove the mask, you're back up to 0 0.7, as you would for a first order attack. Because you're just, yeah, yeah. just pushing the mask to one side. But yeah, yeah, that's right. But, um, so you, you should have a better, a better, um, better distinguisher for a smaller number of traces. If you, assume you assume, assume yeah, that's possible. So. That is right if you manage to, to, to remove completely the mask. I, I mean, it's, I assume. If you assume that you, you're able to, to retrieve exactly the mask during the table recomputation, mm -hmm. but maybe on very noisy devices, you, you are not able to do so. Also, also, oh, yeah. also um, uh, for some very, very low noise, like uh, some of, of your devices, uh, one of your devices is very, uh, very, like, there is almost no noise. Right? Yeah, that was the H51 chip. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, I think a second order attack would be uh, very fast because, as we know, it's it's very related to the noise to the noise level. Mm -hmm. But well, as you said, it, it would anyway cost something. So maybe if you can retrieve the mass completely, then for sure this first order attack will be will be more efficient. Yeah, for the second order on the arm, on the arm chip, I've, I've done a second order analysis, but I can't remember where the how many traces you okay. require or how many. Thank you. Behind you. Are there further questions? Yeah, I have yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, If I have understood correctly, you um, recover the masks, right? Mm -hmm. Am I right? Then um, in just 256 traces, you try to recover the mask for every trace. Or you do something else. So you have, you have one trace uh -huh. from which you take 256 subtraces. Uh -huh. So your mask is then fixed for, for those 256 traces. The mask is fixed for all subtraces? Well, yeah, because it's from the same trace. The random, yeah. random, random, value, the random value within one trace will be fixed, but you're using it multiple times. Then you, you do mask reusing, right? And you have the same mask for the subsequent spots as one round, for instance. or. Well, yes, because standard, standard, standard Boolean masking, for example. Okay, then so, you so, so there's, no, there's, no, there's no mask refreshing. <coughs> you, you refresh, this, uh, refresh this box, mask this box, or let's, let's say mask table. Uh, not so frequently, right? Well, the man makes the, makes a difference. Since you, re you have to cover it, the mask, right? But for every subtrace, let's say, you, you need to know the mask. But, but, the, but the mask will be the same. Yeah, because the mask will be the same in each subtrace. Then how frequently do you recompute the mask table? Never? Well, is, there's no need to recompute. Not as an ethic here. I, I, don't, I, don't, as understand, I don't understand the question. As a designer, in oh, this okay. design, you have, you have a tag, right? Uh -huh. You have a design that you have a tag. In this design, you refresh the mask, refresh, sorry, refresh the, uh, refresh the mask table. How frequently you do it? But the thing is, you 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 would pick one one instance where the mask for the table is refreshed or created, uh -huh. and you attack directly afterwards. So you could refreshed or recreated afterwards. I, you don't care about this. I mean, the okay. uh, so. so you attack on the, on, the, on the part that you refresh the mask table. You recover the mask just yep. use to refresh the table. To go back to right. So something like this for the second order masking, where you're creating a table every time you want to look up, yeah, yeah. you will attack that, okay. and, and, and then, then do your DPA on the output of this. Oh, yeah. 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 Got it. Thank you. Further questions? We still have five minutes time. <laughs>
So otherwise, if there are no further questions, let's thank all speakers of the session again.